Good girls. Okay, so uh, we are here today with Chevy, who is freaking awesome. She is so well potty trained. Sorry, miss, I'll let you have your business. But we picked her up last night, got home very late, and um, Phoenix was not a fan last night. So this is their first interaction. Um, uh, from last night and so unfortunately I had to keep Chevy crated and I had a huge work assignment um, and was not able to get down here quick enough so this girl actually held her bladder and is fully fully potty trained I, I fully expected her to have a crate mess because she's in a new environment and she had to hold her bladder for quite some time before I could get down here this morning and she had a clean crate. So she is so, like stubbornness I guess can be a good thing. So she is doing awesome. Um, and I figured leaving her crated in the room with Phoenix would help Phoenix feel like she still has her alpha status. Um, but Chevy was very confident with her last night and you can see she's pretty much uh, the same size if not taller than Phoenix already so I think is a bit of shock for Phoenix and I don't know if um, they remember their pups or not once they leave um, or if it's like introducing a brand new dog I have been told uh, various um, information I've told they they don't remember their pack and I have told that been told that they do um, so they definitely seem to know each other on some level but there was definitely an alpha challenge uh, happening and you can see that uh, Phoenix is establishing her dominance and um, she is telling Chevy that, hey, uh, the toys are mine. Oh. Ah. And I have a habit of overcorrecting. Um, so I'm gonna let them sort it out amongst themselves for their own safety because I'm not always going to be around and I would like them to be able to both be out and so uh, Chevy has the confidence to actually be the alpha here um, so I'm a bit nervous to be completely transparent on um, their interacting um, so, you know, it is what it is, but um, we, this is very good practice for us because we've always wanted to possibly bring in a third female in the future, um, you know, when we're in a position to have maybe two litters a year. Um, but it looks like Chevy is responding and standing her ground, but respecting uh, Phoenix's um, request. She is not challenging her. Um, she wants to play with Phoenix. But um, Phoenix is just not on board. She's enjoying chewing her stick. Uh, and my task for the day is to clean up this backyard because it is a hot mess. We have balls, shoes, leaves, a ton of issues. Our pool is clogged. Um, yeah, that's uh, 
unfortunately just been very very busy time and miss jordan has been sick for a week so um just hasn't been easy but you can see here that she's trying to initiate play and phoenix loves to play And I have to do my best here to not interfere because I don't like any uh, roughhousing or playing um, until I'm very comfortable with the dog's relationships. That Phoenix seems to be resource guarding. So yeah, not the best lighting today as the sun is still behind the trees. But wanted to give you guys a peek at how gorgeous um, Chevy is. She's um, show dog material for sure because she has those long, long legs. And uh, yeah, they are definitely way longer than Phoenix's. Hey, buddy. Yeah, she's full of energy. Uh, uh no jumping. <laughs> That's true. Your mom did say you do your own workouts. <laughs> So yeah, she's got lots of smells to figure out. And I'm sure she can even smell some of her own smells from when she was a pup. And Phoenix is obviously very interested in what she's doing. Huh? Uh oh, Phoenix! So again, I should not be interfering, but Chevy is bold, okay? So Phoenix is probably gonna make a lesson and she's submitting. And I may have to break up a dog fight, so if that happens, I will let you know. Chevy. So Phoenix is constantly trying to show her dominance here and Chevy is submitting, but Chevy is cheeky, man. As soon as Phoenix dropped her stick, she went for it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna have my hands full. Just wait till Logan comes. Huh? Then what am I going to do? Logan is such a bully and you're going to just provoke him. Please, if anyone is interested in this gorgeous pup, let me know. She is so funny. This is a goofball. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Phoenix's fur is down today, so that makes me happy. Last night, her fur on her back was straight up. 
Um, and, and this is my fault because we got in at midnight and you're technically never supposed to do an introduction on non-neutral ground. So I was ready for a fight. Um, but I also know my dogs listen to me. Um, and Phoenix especially. So she was going to initiate something and I asked her to go home and she listened. So, um, I was very happy with her and um, ultimately she will always listen to me. The issue is really um, when I'm not around what would happen with these guys. So that's why at this point I just am not going to um, leave them unattended because um, Phoenix is this Phoenix has not done this with any of the other pups, but I think because Chevy is her size, it is a threat to her. And obviously Chevy is a very good looking pup out of our litter. So she is a threat to Phoenix's status within the pack, especially when Logan comes back. So, <laughs> oh, this is going to be a fun time, but uh, from what I've seen in just the last 12 hours of having her home, even less than 12 hours, um, it's just a really sucky situation, um, you know, and we're still trying to make sense of it, but she seems to do fine in new environments. Now, this is not a true test because this is not a new environment, um, so I'm going to film a video with my husband, um you know, of his reintroduction to her um, to kind of show what her reaction is to see if she has any fear of males um, or hesitation, you know, and we will bring her out um, and have some other people do assessments. But it's just a devastating situation because she just, you know, unfortunately just will not open up to her certain members of her last family and so they made the hard decision <laughs> phoenix is actually really maternal so if she did remember that that's her pup and if chevy still has the pup smell she should give in to her eventually but um <laughs> yeah um, we're going to hopefully film a video with uh, my husband and her because I, I really want to see how she reacts. Because um, best case scenario, she will just do fine in a home that is, you know, with a proper introduction uh, who gives her time and space to reacclimatize. Um, that's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario, um, she's just going to be a corso that is hesitant around um certain people um but you know as long as people give her time and space she's not a threat she's not um an aggressive dog but if you do continually force her in a fearful position like any other dog um she she is uh and can be a danger and um you guys have heard me refer to it uh, before, but I was just talking about last night with another breeder who hopefully um, you will feature on this channel because she's amazing um, at training her corsos and she runs a big pack um, and she truly, truly works her her dogs on a, um, on a level that um, is definitely impressive. So um, hopefully we'll feature her, but we were just talking about how corsos um, are lethal. You know, you've, you've heard me say it, but their bite PSI is five to 600 plus. So a lion's is 500. So you're talking about an animal that can kill you easily if it wanted to. So if you have a dog that is not comfortable with you in the house, you know, 
or does have issues, I know the PC thing to do is to stand by your dog. They're a lifelong commitment. But at the end of the day, if something happens to your family, PC goes out the window. So, you know, you absolutely have to make sure that your corsos are comfortable with you and your entire family living in the home and anyone that is you know they're not comfortable around you take precautions because it's the age-old rule fight or flight when they are cornered and uh, a confident dog will fight or a scared dog will fight um, if they cannot flight so you know keep this in mind and make those hard decisions like this family did you know, she's just not comfortable in their house and it's, you know, no fault to their own. They did everything that they were advised to do and unfortunately that advice did not match the environment. Um, and I feel actually really bad and responsible for introducing them uh, to an affiliate of mine um, who you know, didn't quite know the full picture to give them um, the advice that they need. But again, you know, that that's a whole topic we'll get into one day. But um, for now, um, I don't want to defame anyone because everyone has their own truth. Um, what's real to me is not real to you. Um, those of you guys who are in relationships or married know this because your partner <laughs> will say one thing, you'll say another, and it takes a lot of work and communication to really understand the actual truth between more than one person. So we will be featuring um, her family's truth. Um, I have a different truth and the trainer that we worked with has a different truth. Um, but I think it's very important for them to share their truth um, because this has been really, really hard on them and their family. And my heart literally ripped out last night of just seeing her kids' faces as I take this dog away. Um, you know, and just the heartbreak because she is so beautiful and she has so much potential. And no matter what we tried, you would need to basically not be working um, to give this dog uh, the level of work she would require to rehabilitate from the unfortunate miscommunication um, trauma that she underwent. So um, she seems to be completely fine here um, I'm not seeing any uncomfortable behavior. She's not shaking. She's not uncomfortable. But again, I am a female and she absolutely loves females and young kids. So the real test will be tonight uh, or tomorrow when uh, we do a nice introduction with Corey to see if we can um, determine if the behavior is related uh, to just the home she was in or if it is a uh, more widespread issue and so if it is a more widespread issue um, she is better off in a home with a more gentle um, very calm quiet patient male um, as opposed to a really um, more alpha type male But I'm going to go get them fed um, and continue to see how they do. But I'm um, very actually happy with this progress since I did not do what you're supposed to do in, you know, taking them on a walk yet. This is, I have, you know, month end reporting for my job. And you know what? I'm being real with you guys. You have dogs and they have responsibilities and you have a family and responsibilities. But if you are a working parent, um, you cannot juggle all balls all the time. You can be excellent some days with the dogs, excellent some days with your kids, excellent some days at work, but you just can't be excellent with everybody every day. And unfortunately, 
it's the worst week for me to try and be excellent with the dogs because of everything happening. But um, despite me being on probably my D game with them, um, they are doing great. And so Phoenix is communicating and she's not attacking. But Chevy is not listening. <laughs> she is testing her boundaries. But Phoenix is getting closer to her too. And Chevy is standing her ground until she's like, geez, what's your problem, mom? Yeah, you are bigger, Chevy. But yeah, if no one is interested in Chevy, um, it's unfortunate because I don't have the time to give her the best life possible um, with everything that I have going on. Um, but, you know, she is... I will definitely show this girl and I will do fast cats with her because her legs are ridiculously long and she's she's just that long lean dog and she is a uh, uh, we've been trying to figure out her color too um, and she, we're actually, she is a Formentino because you can see she has a gray mask and she has the gray stripe on her back, which is a Formentino, but she is probably about the darkest, uh, red, um, I've seen in a Formentino. Um, And we had to do a lot of research because, to be completely honest, I thought she might be Isabella uh, or Tawny, which she isn't. So it's been really hard to figure out her color, but her fur is definitely on uh, the red side. Um, and she originally came out light blue, um, if you look back at our pup videos. And she is the biggest female of our litter. Um... I don't know if she, she might be again, actually, in at least her physical size, probably not by weight, but, you know, because she is more of a lean, long corso, but, um, you know, she is definitely an interesting character. <laughs> But um, our dream would be to have her go to a home where they will just love on her um, and, and possibly show her and breed her because she just is so gorgeous. Um, but again, that would obviously depend on her temperament um, to see if she was just uncomfortable due to the unnecessary trauma that was caused or if it is an actual temperament issue. Um, but so far what I'm seeing and what we've experienced in any other environment, uh, unfortunately than her home, is she seems to be fine. So, all right, enough rambling. This video is already too long. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for more information on Miss Chevy, including her introduction to my husband, and uh, next week, the introduction to her dad, um, which I will be getting help with because I cannot handle three dogs uh, fighting. And, you know, she definitely could become more of a threat um, when Logan is around. But Phoenix seems to be warming up to her, so that makes me very excited.